So coming into, so going back to what uh, we were talking about, right? Uh, so you thought that the building changes behavior, its colors, its surfaces, and temperature for the person. But I know as a fact that we change our behavior in different buildings. I'm not talking about any kind of technological building is, is in a building. So the way you work, the way you feel, your productivity, the route you're taking, and uh, the way you're feeling safe or unsafe, if you think about it, uh, you'll, I think if you're conscious about it, you realize it in you as well, that we change our behavior in different buildings. Um, where we sit, how much we sit, how much we stand, uh, and uh, and our our memories are really shaped by space as well. Like you might uh, feel happier in a certain type of space uh, and less happy in another type of space. So this research that we're doing with Gail now, uh, active shooter incidents, we're looking at how different building design um, options might be influencing people's behavior in case of hiding or evocating um, in active shooter incidents. So we don't have results, but I have another research similar to this, and I do have results in this one. And we looked specifically in architectural visual access. So we did this experiment in a metro station in virtual reality uh, where there was a simulated fire, okay? And we had different versions of this uh, train station. And in one version we had this cluttered columns and thick walls and you can see through and uh, lots of obstacles in your way to basically evocate the station. In another version, we had a lot cleaner space, better lighting, line of sight that you can see the clues of exits, like the, the, the ticket booth booths that you can see that you know that exit is behind uh, those booths. And we looked at how people evocate those two different spaces and how fast they evocate and from which routes they evocate. It is very different. Mm. Yeah. So you can see. Your building, non-technological, changes your behavior.